15 of my challenge, I'm trying to reach the rating of 2000 in chess within 30 days. And today we might get to 1500. Watch the video until the end because I might share with you a checklist of things that you have to do to also get to this rating. Let's go. Let's go. Game started. I play e4 and my opponent responds with e5. Knight out attacking the pawn. And they go with bishop c5. This is called the bash gas gambit. Well, there is a free pawn. Should I take it? If I take it, there might be queen of six and they are threatening checkmate. But I can simply go all the way back. Guys, challenge accepted. I'm taking the pawn. Let's see what they want to do with this idea. Okay, are you telling me that you just go out with the knight attacking the pawn? I can simply play bishop c4, which is ignoring the, the defense of this pawn, but is attacking here. But then my opponent is castling really quickly. I could also play the move d4, which is winning a tempo on this bishop, controlling the center, and going for the bbc, which I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's go. d4 looks really nice. Attacking this bishop, not caring about this pawn. And I might even go on with bishop g5, pinning this knight. Okay, bishop goes back. This is what I expected. We have to be a little bit careful because if we just develop the knight here, protecting this pawn, my opponent is going to play castle, rook 8 and then d6. And then I will have problem defending this pawn. And if I go with my bishop here, I leave this one hanging. So how do I deal with everything? I was thinking about going with the knight here and after castling, playing the move bishop g5, pinning this knight. But then what to do after h6, bishop here, g5, bishop here and rook there. I need to protect this pawn and I might do it with the queen. So play something like queen d3 so that I keep both pawns protected and then I go... <gasps> Okay, that's a good plan. Okay, let's go. So knight out. So this is uh, in order to tell you guys that when you don't know exactly what to play, you don't have to think one move at a time, but you have to understand what to do with all your pieces because if not you might be in trouble you think like if you think like too short term you say like okay now i defend this but then at some point you cannot avoid any more the trouble now h6 i go back here let's see if g5 is also happening i th yeah okay it's all part of the plan and now if rook there we said we go with queen d3 and long castle okay my opponent is actually first attacking this knight. Now the question is, where do we go with the knight? We could go on f3, we could go on c4 attacking this bishop. I might go for this move. I like it because I'm... Uh, okay, there is actually knight take e4. That is a move that we have to consider. But I'm not too scared. So let's go with the knight on c4. We are attacking this bishop. And, you know... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, this is, I think, a bad move. Now, we, we are going to reach a position where we just have an extra pawn without any single trouble. We take here and we are attacking the rook. This is a nice intermezzo. I hope you like Italian words. <laughs> Actually, I think intermezzo is something that you can use in, uh, like, also when you are speaking English. Because it's a used term in a chess uh, literature. <laughs> okay, so the knight goes in the center, and the point is that now I have basically no weakness. Actually, I mean, my opponent has a big one, and it's this pawn. I might slide with my queen here, but then there is king h7, and they are protecting quite well. Even if I could then pin this. Ooh, let's do that. Okay, I'll slide my queen all the way here. If they take there, I'm taking with this pawn, and then my rook is joining the party, and I might give a very quick checkmate. This looks juicy. There is no way for the queen to defend, not on f6, not on d6. So yeah, I agree, this is a good move, but my bishop is going to be there. there yeah, even if the king goes there, I think I will develop my bishop. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to castle, or I might just stay with the king in the middle of the board. This might sound like, what are you doing, Alessia? Are you crazy? You always tell us to castle, uh, bring your king to safety, but, you know rules you have to uh, rules are made to be understood okay first of all to be followed when you start playing chess you just follow the main rules uh then you have to understand the reason behind every move and then you have to apply in the right moment if they have to be applied so the reason of castling early is to put your king into safety now is my king in danger in the middle of the board not really for now at least now the move c5 is 
trying to open up the center so my kin could be in danger but not today maybe tomorrow but not today uh, i'm thinking about the move h4 uh, in order to open up the h file and try to give uh trying to give checkmate but it's honestly not such a big deal <gasps> Ooh, I'm seeing a nice move and it's e6. It's crazy though, uh, but I think it might really work. Um, so basically, I'll, I'll just throw, I think it works, I'll explain you. So my opponent cannot take with the pawn because my queen is sliding here. And now after bishop takes, I still give a check and where is the king going? If they push this pawn, it's just checkmating two moves. If they move the king here, I'm taking on h6. And how to avoid the checkmate on g7, h8, h7. There are so many checkmates. I mean, please, let's appreciate the bishop pair. They deserve the green color, definitely. There's three checkmates. Bing, boom, bang. Which one should I give? I mean, depends on my opponent move, but I think they cannot avoid. They might just resign here. Okay, we go for this one then. <laughs> GG's. All right, a new game. Another Indian player. And we're playing with the black pieces. I'll play the move e5. And bishop out. This is the bishop's opening. I like to develop a knight here and to attack this little pony. Now we go with the other knight out. This is called the two knights defense with the black pieces. There is a free pawn that we could take. Now should we? I mean, I guess we accept the challenge one more time. I'm a bit scared, but it should be alright. So d4 makes sense, and I think we have to reply to the, with the move d5. Remember, every time um, that there is a gambit, a very important move is to play the move d5. Also in the fried liver, that's a very way to face the fried liver, to play the move d5. The point is that with the move d5, you are challenging this bishop on c4. And this bishop is so strong, because he's attacking the most vulnerable point in our field, the f7 pawn. So d5 is usually a very useful move, and here is so is having so many purposes: attacking the bishop, protecting the knight. Queen d3. I'm not a big fan of this move because what are you doing? So your idea right, is that if I take, you're going to take the queen. But here I would have a very nice move. I could just throw my knight on f2, attacking the queen and the rook. My opponent has to take, and then I'm taking here. Queen takes. And the king is a bit unstable there. I think that's a great idea, guys. Okay, we go. Binge, boom, boom. Okay, we take here. And the point is that my opponent has no pieces to attack. Now, I'm playing bishop there because I'm developing with tempo. So, d5 cannot be played because that pawn would be just hanging. I'm attacking the queen. The queen has to move one more time. Now, this pawn is under attack. And this pawn is also under attack. Now, once my opponent takes, they are also attacking the knight that would be hanging. Uh, but I don't think it's such a big deal. I'm thinking if I should play e5 or take, or simply develop this bishop. Okay, I'll take here, and after uh, queen take b7, I might try to trap this queen. Oh, okay, the knight takes there. Okay, in this case, I think I have to just castle as soon as possible. I'm looking at this move just in case if can be played mm, but i don't think so okay the knight is also attacking there i might just play the move queen d5 i know that i'm trading the queens so i just have an extra pawn so it's not much and this king is weak oh i have a great idea actually i could go with the queen now to give a check either here or there and then to long castle <laughs> that's quite nice because once the once this uh, knight is moving, I'm basically giving checkmate. Okay, I think I will go with the queen here. I'm giving a check. And the king has to move probably here. I mean, or there, if they are really... <laughs> if they, they, they have courage, you know. Okay, and now I can just long castle. And that's a very fun move. Because if the knight is taking, I'm not forced to take back. Remember that every time your opponent takes, shortly consider, do I have a better move? Because I could simply slide with my rook and give checkmate. Okay, so this bishop is, is protecting the knight, but still the threat here is not protected. I think I might play the move h6, just to say goodbye to the queen. Uh, because if I take bishop takes, 
I want to play a bishop here, guys. That's that's my idea. Okay, let's start to say goodbye to the queen. Bye, cheers. Oh no. No, that's a bad square to choose. I'm sorry, Duana. That was a very bad choice. But that's a nice checkmate. 14 moves, guys. Not bad. We crashed the Newman Gambit in 14 moves. Let's try to do better. E4, E5. There we go. Knight out attacking this pawn. We protect it. Bishop here. And we play knight there. So this is the two nice defense. You know what I'm playing right now? <laughs> okay, so we have the fried lever, guys. My opponent is attacking here with the knight and with the bishop. And here is how you have to you destroy this opening or like you make it not effective. So you play the move d5, you sacrifice a pawn. The idea is that you don't want nobody to take there. Now, if you dare to take this pawn with the knight, you're nearly losing because there is knight take f7 and then the queen slides to f3, winning back the piece. So you have to go with the move knight a5. You are attacking the bishop. Remember, this piece is very strong because it's attacking the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable point in our field, which is the pawn on f7. Now, bishop b5 is the move that I expect because you move the bishop by giving a check. So you don't want to uh, just play a free move. I'm not a cow, but I just was shocked by this move because my opponent is just giving me this bishop, basically offering me. And they want to take there, but they have a plan, you know, because after knight takes, they want to take back and this pawn is protected. So they want to say like, ha, I'll be, a, uh, I'll be having an extra, an extra pawn. Now I could definitely sacrifice that and say like, your development is weird, this pawn is weak. Mm, should I do that? So I could, for example, take, pawn takes, play h6, the knight has to go back, play this move, the knight goes there, I play bishop here, or I could also play... Bishop g4, f3 needs to be played. Aha, I, 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 have, I don't have to take though. Or I could play like bishop here and then bishop there, then bishop here and then f6 and then I take. And if knight takes, hmm. Or I could also wait a little bit, but then the king is castling. Okay, this is like a very complicated line. Let's see if there is something simpler. Because I think I could also, I mean, I could just play h6 or Wait, I will just play bishop here. I like this move. Mm -hmm. I like this move a lot. And there is a very sneaky idea here. After castle, I'm going to take here. And after pawn takes, I go with the bishop here. And if the knight goes back, I play the move e4 and I win a piece. Okay, now my opponent didn't go for that, but they are honestly in trouble. I will take here and get rid of that bishop. Now my opponent will protect and they have an extra pawn. But how will they take back? With this pawn or with this pawn? I mean, yeah, this pawn feels more harmonious, but I'm really a bit concerned about this knight. So I will play queen here. Oh, sorry, bishop here. I'm attacking this queen. Where is the queen moving? It seems like this is the only square. Yes, a good choice. And now I want to go with the queen here. Uh, I'm keeping both options to go for a short or long castle. I made the other in the, diff in the opposite way. <laughs> Who cares? And also, I'm preparing to move bishop f5, attacking the queen one more time. And at some point, I want to play the move h6 and ask a question, a big question to this knight. Where are you going to go in your future? Because those squares are not looking so nice because I'm going to push there. So the knight has to try to go there, but... What if I play this move? Then they can take here with check. That's a good point. That's why I think I'm going long castle here. Three, two, one, go. This pawn is protected by the queen. Always take care of that. Because if there is a knight on g5, you know, and you go long castle, this pawn is suddenly unprotected. So you have to have another piece protecting it. Now, h3 is kind of helping us because we go back here, we attack the queen. And what do you do when there are opposite side castling? This is so important. It made me win so many games when I was younger. I just a simple plan. You gotta push the pawns, uh, trying to open up files, and then bring the rooks, the queen, and give checkmate. That's the idea. Who is attacking? Uh, who is quicker 
queen's usually the game. Now, the queen is moved. This is already a free pawn, but there is also this pawn free. Uh, what to do here? I mean, let's play h6, uh, trying to win a temple on this knight. Now, I could think about pushing there even forward. I mean, the knight might even go there, but the knight there is not looking any good. Yeah, let's do this. I, I mean, if the knight goes there, this knight is nearly trapped. Every time you go forward with your piece, make sure that you have a way to go back. I'm really expecting uh, knight e5 here, uh, but it would be a bad move. This would be also bad <laughs> because I have the move e3, which is so strong. All right, they chose this central square. Now, the knight has not a way to go back. I mean, the only way is this one. Um, but they have to do it very quickly because I have to move the queen, right? So I'll move the queen here. Uh, and my next move can be bishop d4. So they have to cover the threat. That's the right way to do it. But um, let me think. So I'm thinking bishop there, sorry, bishop there. But I'm not attacking anything. So my opponent could play the move c4. Okay, but l l let's do it. I mean, you have to do it. The only move that is not losing a piece is to play pawn here, sacrificing a pawn. But that's very hard to see as a move because I'm not attacking anything. The, my threat is a silent move, rook here, where I'll be attacking this knight once and a third time and my opponent is no longer able to defend it. This knight cannot be moved and they cannot defend it. This piece is lost forever. Well, there is still a move actually that can save white and is the move f4 but f4 is coming also with a big risk this king is getting weaker 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 and they play it wow that's strong um but i'm not sure if it's enough guys there is an empassant should we take the empassant or not i mean i'm not sure if it's good but i take the empassant because you guys like empassants i know that um but I'm not sure if this is the right move. Now, the knight is taking back. And then I have different options. I'm looking at knight here, for example. And then maybe f6. This looks nice. I could also simply take this pawn there. Okay, they take with the knight. That's the smart approach. What do they do after knight, knight here? Where is the queen going? Well, the queen could go there, could go there. And this bishop is under attack. Maybe we simply take this pawn. Yeah, this is a simple, a simple move. I know that it is not like the most aggressive move, very not very efficient, but it's a good move. And the idea is now to play knight there and then f6. Uh, you might be wondering, what about this pawn? It's been hanging s for a while. Uh, but usually to take those pawns is very, 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 very dangerous. Because you're opening up, you're making, you're basically helping me. Because I want to push this pawn, potentially, and then to use the rook here to give checkmate. So if you take, you give me a favor because you save me two tempos. Okay, my time is getting shorter, so let's please find a move. Okay, I will go with knight there. I'm not super happy about this move because this bishop is left a bit behind. There, there is no way for this bishop to go back. But on the other side, there is not a way for my opponent to attack this bishop immediately with the next move. This queen has to be moved, and the question is, where does the queen go? If the queen goes here, I play f6, and this knight is in big trouble. Okay, now the queen is taking there, but I might go with the rook there. They take this pawn, though. I want to trade the queens. Nope, I don't want to trade the queens at all. Okay, but I have this check that is looking like a very nice resource. Where is the king moving? I, I unlocked a square for my knight. Oh, sorry, for my queen. Yes, we play this. It's a little bit scary, not gonna lie. But our rook is starting to be strong. We gave away a few pawns. Already a second one now. Because I think the queen should take. I mean... You're offering a trade of when you are up material and but you are under attack, you should try to trade the queens. But after queen here, which is a square that I uh, made three by made three, I free, gave freedom to that square by moving the bishop here and giving a check. Uh, oh wow! Now my opponent has this way to forcefully trade the queens. This might be a big trouble for me, guys. If I lose a game, I have to play the grub, which is the worst chess opening. Uh, no, I can't let this happen. Also, we have to get to 1500. 
oh, oh, hoi boy. Okay, they are forcefully forcing us to trade the queens. That's honestly bad. Okay, I'll move the king here. And, and I'm in trouble, guys. For real. I have two minutes. <sighs> okay, we take back with the queen. We have to analyze what went wrong here. Okay, so I took with the knight just because I want my bishop to be able to come back here. We have the bishop here, which has saved us already many times, but we are two pawns down. We have some sort of attack, but it's not a big deal at the moment. Okay, knight there. I think we exploit the situation to push this pawn, attacking this little knight one more time. Now the rook is under attack, we have to move this, and we go here, looking at the knight. And the pawn, a third pawn is falling. Oh my, oh my cheese macaroni. We have to find something here. I'll go with the bishop there, trying to attack this. We are three pawns down, and the time is not the nicest. <laughs> okay, they, want, they go with the bishop there, they want to trade. I will go immediately with this rook here. I would love to take there. I might be in the biggest trouble ever. Okay, they are defending. They are defending. Okay, I will take here. There we go. There are some ideas now. I mean, imagine a bishop there. This would be a very strong check. And now the knight is approaching. I have to avoid trading pieces. That's really important. Then maybe slide the knight here and there. My opponent is a hero. Wow, they go with the knight there. I'll give a check, guys. I might have a good tactic. Now I go here. By giving a fork, and after this move, I can take here with a double check. This is double check with the rook and with the knight, so my opponent has to move, and now I take there. Alright, I'm still having trouble, so I give a check, and another check. The king has to move one more time. Now, I will play rook here, and I'm going to take this pawn. Whew, I think I'm winning this game. No grub, guys. I'll take here attacking this bishop. And now we have to stop this pawn, no matter what. This is a great move. Can we try to give checkmate somehow? Uh, okay, let, let's play rook here. I, I don't see it. Let's bring the king, guys. In the end game, you gotta bring the king. Ooh. Let's attack this bishop. And there. And, uh, and uh, wait a second. Bishop here is actually a good move. Will my opponent find it? No, they didn't. Oh, that's a pity. They played really well. They really deserve a huge club club because Bilal was the closest to beat me up to this point. Okay, let's let's still seal the deal. We give a check. Uh, the king moves there. Now we go with the rook there. And then we'll bring also the second rook. We attack this bishop. Now we play this move. This is a checkmate threat, guys. The rook is passive. Going to defend. Let's try to trade pawns. We bring the king. And we shouldn't trade too many pawns though. Okay, let's go with the rook here. Just taking some time to think what to do. I don't... I'm not going to trade. I'm attacking the bishop again. And I shouldn't trade too many pawns. Okay, let's go here. I want to play this move. It's crazy, I know. But it has a very good idea. I take here? Yes. And now I give a check, and then I take. Five seconds remaining. We have to be smart. Oh, okay. Okay, that was close. Analysis. All right, guys, this was a critical moment because the line I chose, it actually makes some sense because uh, I'm taking back the pawn, now material is equal. But I ended up in being in trouble because my opponent has queen take g7, with the idea then that the queen are going to be traded. And my opponent did such a good job here. So if we go back at this point, I have a very sweet move that I can play. Actually, a combination of moves. If you can find the best move for black, is like two moves that you have to find in a row. Uh, it's amazing. Let me know in the comments. Let's go on. Okay, last game of today. We are playing at 1600 and we have to get to 1500. So let's get the job done. Okay, I'm playing the Spanish. This is the opening that I play the most at right now. Um, okay, my opponent is going immediately to kick this bishop and to attack it for real. Now, there is a free pawn there. 
This is called the Norwegian variation. I'm taking there. Let's see how much my opponent knows this. Okay, they're taking, I'm taking. And now they play queen there. Actually, they're playing amazingly. Uh, I think we go to an end game. This game might be quick. <laughs> Very quick. Okay, I'll play d4 just to protect this knight. I don't want to give up immediately to the piece. And we go with the knight here. Yeah, I like this idea. And now we trade the queens. Yes, and there we go. We are in an endgame. Is this endgame good for me? Honestly, not much. <laughs> but we have to, we have to deal with, with the consequences of our action. Maybe taking on e5 wasn't a big deal. We have to develop really quickly, so we go with the bishop out. Well, we leave this room. Ooh, wait a second. Do you see what I see? There is something that my opponent didn't take into consideration. That's a free cheese macaroni, guys. Because after pawn takes, we are taking gear. Okay, this is just a check. We take back. This pawn, this knight still cannot be taken. Honestly, this bishop takes is just a mistake. It makes no sense. It's just a trade without purpose. And remember, do not trade without purpose. I'm taking gear, winning another pawn, and then taking gear and winning another pawn. Okay, the idea of my opponent is quite clear. If I take, they want to go with the rook there, and then how do I protect my knight? I cannot, so I cannot take there. And so how do I go back exactly with my knight? Well, I could take here intermezzo and then go with the knight 25, which looks really amazing. So I'm doing that. Uh, because trading pieces when you're up material is always good. Now we are attacking this knight. Uh, we play g3 with tempo, protecting this pawn that was under attack. And we play also this move with tempo, attacking one more time. And now we'll also trade there. And this pawn structure of my opponent is the saddest pawn structure ever. Now we play rook here, which is such a good move. Because we are ready to bring the rook one more time. And now look at this rook, they have so much space. And they're attacking a pawn, right? Oh, and my opponent is instant resigning. Yeah, this was like just a completely winning endgame. What you have to do, my opponent has to play rook here. And now the only thing that you have to do is to push these pawns, push and baby, and create a pass pawn, promote it, and you'll win the game. And we got to 1500, guys. I hope you enjoyed this game, but wait a second, because here there is a checklist for you. There we go. How to get to 1500? I have made already one checklist how to get to a thousand. And here we are. In the how to train, there is a change. It's not anymore 50 50, but this, I want to introduce the one third rule, uh, is by Grandmaster Noel Studer. And this one third tactic and calculation, one third playing and analyzing. So this is analyzing. Uh, so this is already what we have done. And then there is one third. Now you have to start to work on your openings, middle game, and games, positional chess. And I'm giving you tips for every of these categories. For endgame, just do the essential. For real, don't buy books about endgame, no. I will one day, hopefully at the end of this challenge, make a video about what you have to know about the endgame. So you have just one video that you can watch and you know everything that you have to know. Uh, if you like the idea, let me know in the comments. So, you know, passing pawn end games, opposition, Lucina, Philidor position. Openings, memorize less and understand more the idea, the ideas and the plans of your opening. This will make a huge difference because you will forget all your moves any time you try to memorize them, but you will not forget the plans. For positional chess, I want to recommend a book that has helped me a lot, Understanding Chess Tactics. All the resources will be linked in the description. And the, there is no affiliate, I just suggest what I think it's great. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. Tomorrow I'll come back for day 16, and if you missed out, here you are, day 14 is amazing. Ciao!